from the Hanging with Web Show TV's Bargain Basement Studio in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. It's Pillow Talk with Willow Schuyler. Will you take me to Winnipeg? I will, someday. Toronto, Montreal, Quebec, Winnipeg. Now what's this guy doing up here in Manitoba? <laughs> <laughs> he was holding the map up. Every salvage mission that's been through this system has disappeared. Even those old pirates out of Winnipeg Drift say it's cursed. Cursed. Your Winnipeg's got a great ballet. You have a good time, I swear to God. Sweet guinea pig of Winnipeg! They've taken over our company! Balderdash! I never agreed to that! I should have stayed in Winnipeg. You know? I had a nice gallery, three paintings in the wall. Are you kidding? <laughs> and you look back. Born home Quebec. Drafted out of the juniors in the fifth round to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Mm -hmm. Played for a year with the Leafs, then traded to the Winnipeg Jets, then to Calgary, then to Boston. Wow. So Winnipeg must get pretty cold up there. That's it! Back to Winnipeg! <laughs> Hello, welcome to Will's <laughs> Pillow Talk. I'm sure I'm laughing because we're both from Winnipeg, so <laughs> this is just like, <laughs> uh, I, I had, you know, my intro, it, I know it seems a little bit long for some people, but <laughs> it's like all the little, all these little quirky things from, from pop culture that make fun of Winnipeg it's just like yeah. and and it, it's funny how how many times we actually do get mentioned in mm -hmm. pop culture and tv shows and movies I <laughs> forgot how many of them were some of them I was just like oh my god I forgot <laughs> <laughs> I really rattled off the whole thing about you know, I'm just I'm just wondering yeah. how long it took you to find all them clips so um, <laughs> there's a guy that put it together on YouTube so I just kind of stole that <laughs> <laughs> made it my own <laughs> there's apparently oh, like there's other ones too um it, there, like there's so many mentions uh flypaper mentions winnipeg and it's it's hilarious it's, i love it <laughs> yeah well I, mean, I think it has to do with the fact that there's a lot of creative like canadians that'll end up in creative places and uh, like tied to hollywood and it, it's almost like the inside joke it's the place to hey, make yeah, and you know, and it's funny hi. because like, our, how's hi, it going? Yeah. <laughs> what a rappy. Yeah, hi. What's um, what's what's going on, guys? Our, our city, yeah, it kind of has become like the movie hub now, like as of the last couple of years, like the last ten years, like um, mm -hmm. any any of like. Um, Netflix well, a lot of films, tons of stuff here. My son's been working for yeah. Netflix for the past couple of years, so I'm not surprised if more Winnipeg references get mentioned and mm -hmm. i wish i could remember there was actually a k-drama that i watched and, and it floored me they referenced it oh nice there okay Eric, it, that there was there was somebody who blah 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 canadian that, that you know family <laughs> over in canada and no 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 he doesn't live in ottawa anymore he lives in winnipeg and you're like who the hell in seoul knows where winnipeg is and uh, the the great thing is, um, you know, with the Simpsons, like so much, so much reference uh, from the Simpsons is from here. Um, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, you know, half the characters are like somewhat related to anybody that is from here. So I just play Winnipeg papers that all ended up in Springfield. <laughs> uh, yes. Carly, Carlene, hello, Joe Dog. You know what? It, I'm so glad that you're. I I hope Joe. I hope you got your stuff worked out with Facebook because I miss I miss actually seeing your shows on your page. Um, Teresa, hi, Terry. Good to see you. Our friend from Ireland. He's everywhere. Hi. He's everywhere. Back to Belfast. Terry, back to Belfast. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we'll have just like a general geek session. I'm glad to have Sharon back. Uh, she's uh, she does well, a lot of great work with uh, uh, our mental health, and uh, she's you know 
Yeah, mental health oh and I'm, oh like I'm, I'm turning being a geek in, into a paycheck and uh, <laughs> and trying to help people heal along the way. <laughs> well, that, it's it's one of those things. You know, like, I mean, I've been a nerd my whole life and I love this stuff. And so it's nice to kind of be able to flip it and turn it into an asset considering like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Simultaneously love it and go, mom needs an intervention. And I, that's you, the convention. <laughs> um, <laughs> the yeah. fact that you you used to be our uh, um, like Manitoba's health minister, public health, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, minister of healthy living and the minister of health. So that's where the, some of the mental health stuff comes in, as well as a lived experience. But yeah, there there was a time I was responsible for a six billion dollar budget in the health care of a one point three million people. Um, so. <laughs> And I wasn't allowed to use the word superpowers or neuroplasticity. My political <laughs> staff literally would be prepared to tackle me um, and duct tape my mouth shut if if either of yeah. those words came out of my mouth. <laughs> hey, it, it, the, it, the fact that you got the job while well in cosplay just it astounds me. Yeah. I love that yeah. story. I was, I was <laughs> with Nick Fury when the premier offered me the job of... Uh, health minister, which is the the largest oh, wow. portfolio, like I was responsible for forty eight percent of the budget. And when he called, and I was at the con, I just did the lifted the eye patch up, couldn't bring myself to speak to the premier with the eye patch, and then had to like I'm listening to the phone call, and at the same time fighting the urge to go, just hold that thought, <laughs> let me take a selfie, and then you decide whether you want to give Nick Fury the six billion dollar healthcare budget. Just and I figured, no, I'll talk myself out of a job. So I'm just gonna sure. In the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, you've been busy the last little while with your shows. Yeah, it's weird how that works. And once you become a nerd, you seem to just get busier and busier with all these interviews you're booking, all these things you're talking about, and hanging stuff up on your wall, as you may or may not have seen in the producer's chat backstage, Willow. Yeah, it's it's great. But I love it, though. I live for it. You know, I feed off of energy, and the more people I'm around, the more people I'm hanging out with, the better I feel about life. You know, but you know what? I'll be honest Absolutely. with you. Absolutely. I'll be honest with you, though. Today's a celebration. It's funny you guys bring up mental health because I've been going, I mean, all of us have, but I've been going through some rough, rough patches here and there. But today, I would say I was the first time I feel like legit, like 100%, both physically and mentally. And also, when you got a Star Trek first contact poster on your wall and Picard's going to be looking at you every single day for the rest of your natural born life, you can't really go wrong because <laughs> in the words of our friend Rosemary Rose, even though they said it on the series, make it so so i've made it so and i'm here so that's something to celebrate i think country it's good to see you again because the last time i saw you we were chillaxing in in, in our studio at neuroculture we were talking about this great film called teenager ninja turtles 2 which actually turned 30 actually last week actually no the last time we were on my show talking about justice league and then right before that we were on your show talking about teenage mutant ninja turtles you've been on so many shows last week you just don't <laughs> even remember where you've been no, no, no! I didn't forget about your show. He's been hanging with, with, with Web Celebrity. We had, we had pizza he for is. dinner tonight, so they're just passing you yeah. around to every show. Aren't they? <laughs> so, hey, man! Look, I got no problems making the rounds because the more you plug yourself, it's better. It's great marketing. True. You know? true. Willow knows this. I mean, she hosts a show called Pillow Talk. You can't find anything else like that. Ginger Chronicles. Ginger Chronicles. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. It's yeah. crazy. But no, this moving is, to no, Sunday it's, nights. It's, it's great. <laughs> I know Sunday night. Willow's like, yeah, I got no plans. My guests, I booked like these five million dollar guests. They didn't show up. Anyone else want to do anything? <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? We, we can geek out hey, about random what? stuff like Star Trek, Funko Pops, and how Brian is spending all his money and he can never afford anything else. So yeah, another, Brian, another we're looking YouTuber at you, out man. better. <laughs> I, I, I like to surround myself with uh, with intelligent people because it makes me feel good to promote other people. <laughs> Is that what, what I feel like, I'm like I need to get my own podcast. I just keep showing up on other people's podcasts. Willow, what makes you think I'm intelligent? Where did that come from? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, we're all nerds. Like, we've oh, all... we're all smart. <laughs> like, no, yeah, we're, we're the uber smart people. That's that's what they need. When people have questions about anything that's in the nerd universe, because that's a variety of different things, I'm not going to get you wrong, uh, they call <laughs> us. Like Sharon's shirt. You know, who are you going to call? <laughs> you call <laughs> the nerds, man. You call well, the and, nerds. And you can't see it, but just outside, of the, there's a whole whack of Ghostbusters stuff up there. Yep. 
<laughs> She's, you, she I actually is part of the Manitoba uh, Ghostbusters. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's great. One of these days when I get a fire suit and a proton pack, a.k.a. a nuclear whatever it is in our backs, and we go up to the 10th floor where there's some kind of a cockroach up there, we'll talk business. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, and, and we're, we're three generations of Ghostbusters. So my, my – well, he's now 17, but when he was mm -hmm. about five or six, got hooked on the movie. There I did his first um, outfit for him, and he went to his first con. And it was around that age that he started questioning the value of Halloween – because our cons always fall around the time of Halloween. He's like, well, why would I want to freeze my butt off trick-or-treating for a bunch of candy when I can walk through the entire convention center and there's all these people in costumes and, you know. <laughs> and so then we connected with, um, yeah, some Ghostbuster groups. So first Manitoba Ghostbusters. Now I'm with Winnipeg Ghostbusters. And um, so there's he and I, and I do um, an answer the call suit. So I do pink holes. Holtzman. And then um, I've got grandchildren and my, uh, well, she's seven now, but I guess when she was about five or six, she hijacked her uncle's uh, original <laughs> outfit and I retrofitted it to be an ATC outfit. And now oh, she's got a little brother who is a, basically a month and three days old. And she's already like, well, mm -hmm. when does he get a Ghostbusters outfit? Because <laughs> she wants him to be the youngest Ghostbuster. <laughs> so oh, it's boy, like, I you know, Ben can barely hold his head up and his sister is already like, well, what, how do you make a baby sized proton pack? <laughs> <laughs> but oh, he's been, man. he's been raised in total nerddom. His bedroom is entirely Lord of the Rings. So I, I mean, mean you know, like I think... custom comforter. He's got well, images on the wall. He's got the misty mountains painted on the wall. We've got some script from the uh, opening line of the book up there. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. And then he's also named after the Scarlet Spider, uh, Benjamin Riley. Oh, that's so, yeah. awesome. We just, breed, so, we just breed nerds in our family. <laughs> hey, you know, it, it, we all bleed it. We all got nerd in our bloodstream, so just keep it flowing. But I will say this. Uh, what is it, Sharon? Uh, do you know that – Are you do you have plans for the 20th anniversary celebration of Lord of the Rings in December this year? We, You know what? We're living day to day. I haven't even thought that far ahead in light of the pandemic. <laughs> Sorry, you got nine months. It's okay. Um, yeah, because the 20th anniversary okay. of the franchise, if not Fellowship of the Ring, is going to be yeah. in December of this year. So fasten your seatbelts. Oh. It's going to be one heck of a ride. Ooh. Ooh, we still have... Okay, then I definitely... He's going to outgrow his costume, though, because he's also got a Frodo costume. And that was my... His his uncle, when he was a month okay. old, it was, it was Halloween, so we all dressed up in Lord of the Rings costumes. We did a family thing, and so it was baby Frodo. So oh, now, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, Ben's going to outgrow his original Frodo outfit. I may have to make him a second <laughs> one. <laughs> well, so much for calling him even the smallest person could change the course of the future. Well, he's not yeah. going to be small anymore. They're going to be taller, so you got to get yeah. new outfits. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we, have, we have a pretty wicked multi-generational like, tickle trunk at our house. Why am I not surprised? Why am I not surprised? So, yeah, Lord of the Rings turns 20. Uh, Terminator 2, Judgment yes. Day turns 30 this year. How about that? Oh, God. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. Hey, wild. Willow, write this down in your Willow's calendar. Uh, July 3rd. July 3rd. Is when I need to have a calendar. 30. Hey, I'm down for the watch along on that one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Cool. Country, country, brother. Something's going to go know. down that weekend. And it's not just Independence Day. Because so, the movie came out on July 3rd, so we may have to do it a few days before because we want people to be able to celebrate, you know, Fourth of July weekend. But we'll see. We'll see. But we may do something for you there, country. We'll get back to you. I got to have my people call your people. All right. So I think we're going to have to start dressing up when we do these uh, watch alongs, though. Yes. <laughs> hey, I mean, if, if we had known about that cool. weeks ago, you know, country and I would have dressed up as was it Leonardo and Raphael. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll be Raph, uh, definitely. Yep. Yeah, you could be Raph. I'll be Leo, or I can switch. Up I'd be Donatello. Like <laughs> yeah. Be, yeah, sure, absolutely. You I'd have to chin on my inner a hole to be Raph, but it'd work. Mm, mm. I'll shake and shake all back. Tell me, you didn't pay money for this. Sorry, that's from the first movie. I know that turned thirty last year, but give me a break, guys. Hey, man, the first one's the best. We made that. It is. I can't help it. Man. I can't help it. I keep quoting it. I keep quoting it like every other day. It's crazy. Ninja Turtles were great, though. Like they I, I, I remember, they still are. They still like are. The Thirty first... <laughs> years later, they are still awesome. Tacular or Bossa Nova, as country and I like to say. And I didn't, I didn't hate the Michael Bay version. I mean, it wasn't nothing like what I grew up with, but no. I didn't hate it. Yeah, the first one's fine. Out of the shadows is a hunk of 
garbage. But um, you know, Michael Bay, if you're listening to this, I know you are. That was how you really feel, Ryan. Um, well, it was. That's your honest okay, Michael Bay you what, uh, uh, opinion. <laughs> Sharon, Sharon, full disclosure, Michael Bay, I know you're watching this because you're sitting in your mansion at home. You owe me $22.30, whatever it is, $22.50, whatever it is. You owe me for two movies. One of them is Ninja Turtles Part 2, Out of the Shadows. And the second one is Transformers Age of Extinction. Okay? So I want my money back for both. Extinction. You only owe me $1.99. I ran it off Red, uh, Redbox, so. There you go. <laughs> so if Michael is listening and he's watching this, you need to write, your, write us some checks, mail it to us, and we'll be fine. We'll be good. I need interest though. Dollar anyway, ninety nine isn't gonna do anything. Yeah, it's not. It's not. We got to put interest on that, Michael. So I know you're watching. Write that down. Oh, and convert to modern day dollars. That kind of stuff. Yeah. You know? That kind of stuff. You know, yeah. avoid. You know, avoid trampling over the transformer name more than you need to do. <laughs> you know, to pay us, you know. I, yeah. I, I, I full full it. agreement there. Preach, country. See, I, Preach. Okay, I did not. I did not hate transformers to be honest like it was it was good i could have done without some of the you know um, sexual innuendos the, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the the double entendres <laughs> yeah that would have been some subtlety <laughs> if they were actually yeah. double entendres. no for me look willow Willow, when you go back in 2007, because that's when the first one came out, fun fact for you kids at home, I like the first one, and I like Dark of the Moon, which is the third one. Anything else I could go without. But the spinoff movie that's kind of outside of it, known as Bumblebee, I bought, I bought that during a late night, tar- not late night, it was early night, but early night Target run. And I sat home and I watched it because my friends were telling me how great it was. I got to tell you, I was shocked at how great Bumblebee was. That movie is so mm-hmm. darn good. And plus, when you got one of the most talented and innovative actresses in the history of Hollywood, at least for this moment, known as Haley freaking Steinfeld, one of the best in the world. I'm not going to argue that. She's one of the best. Carrying that yeah. movie, you got yourself going there. What's this now? Yeah. What it, yeah. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Age of extortion. Okay. I thought you were agreeing with me about extortion, but that's okay. I still love you. Um, but yeah, one, three, and Bumblebee are my, are my favorites. Yeah, Bumblebee was fantastic. It's too bad we never got a sequel to it. I'm bummed out. We never got one. I think they put a cap on the Michael Bay movies now. <laughs> well, that's true. Because he did produce the movie, although that, that film was actually great. And Michael Bay didn't have really – he had a producer's credit, but then again, it wasn't his film. It was um, the guy who directed Kubo and the Two Strings, Travis Knight. Travis Knight. Yeah, and that's it another his film. It was It wasn't Michael's film. It was Travis's. So, Travis, if they give you a contract to make Bumblebee part two and three, just <laughs> – because I like yeah. Bumblebee one. I want a trilogy, son. Well, right now it's all about Zack Snyder, so it's <laughs> – Yeah, that uh, indie dude, that uh, four, four hour plus, which feels like six if you count the slow motion sequences country. Um, hey, okay, you know I love the slow motion sequences. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think good. of the yeah. Zack Snyder's Justice League, Sharon? Well, you see, I it, it's it's one of those things like, yes, there were some things that were added and fleshed out. But I just sit there and I kind of go like, four hours? Like and, and 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 how many slow mo scenes? Like it's one of those. Like I I, I get that there were some. You know, there's yep. definitely this was his vision, and Joss Whedon mm-hmm. was brought in under circumstances. So I get you're getting a more honest thing, right. and at the same time, there is part of me because of my kids being in the film industry, kind of doing like the editing. Where are the was the editing? <laughs> like there's there's stuff like just just little <laughs> nips and tucks here. Uh, you know, you don't need to have like something like that. Like I mean, okay, we're in a pandemic. So, you know what, I can press pause and I can go to the bathroom um, or, or get whatever. Like, mm-hmm. you, you can't sit there. And I mean, and that was even some of the challenges with some of the Lord of the Rings stuff or when you got into like, you know, Infinity mm-hmm. War and, and, and Endgame. There's that kind of like, you. I mean, we did those as family films and that was the whole, if we're getting drinks and everything, we just literally did the whole get to your seat, bring your stuff. And then we did this tag team of bathroom runs so that, Everybody, when the, the movie started, was sitting there with an empty bladder and then, <laughs> and then just pacing yourself on your beverages and everything else. So, like, it's one of those things that, to me, a good movie 
you know, yes, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, the first half of the movie was nothing but slow But yeah, motion, like, so to me, you can't talk about a great movie four at four hours. four hours, because that, to me, yeah. tells me you probably, you know, this is this is not Kubrick, this is not 2001, this is not something of that kind of epic level. It's not Gandhi, it's not, and again, Gandhi at least put in an intermission. Um, it's not, it's well, not at least it was on HBO Max, all you had to do is hit pause. I mean. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what that I'm saying. True. Like HBO Max is the best thing to hit the interwebs since sliced bread, man, because you can pause whatever you're doing and be like, but, hey, six hour movie, I can pause and take a bath and break. Thanks. But again, can you imagine if that was released in the theater? I wouldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't and I think do that's it. the difference. Do it. We're doing it at home with challenge your challenge accepted. <laughs> I mean, like e even even uh, Titanic when it was released on uh, on VHS, you know, the pause huh? was you switching you had to tapes. Switch out the VHS because there was two tapes. There was two tapes. Remember that? I forgot about that. There were two that. tapes for Titanic. There were two tapes for that. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, I know exactly when the first tape ended. It's when he turns around. They hear that the ship is about to sink, and he turns around and he says, "I believe you may have your headlines, Mister Ismay." Cut to black. Put in tape number two. Go to the second half of the movie. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> there you yeah. go, country. See, I remember these weird stuff. I'm not doing man. a watch along on Titanic. No. no. no it's all right, country. No. Willow and no. I can do it. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Willow, you'll be there, right? Yeah. <laughs> do you Do you want to know how much I hate uh, uh, Celine Dion? Hi, <laughs> 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 hey, Nisha. Hey, guys, how are like you? Good. Yeah. All right. So I stole Nisha away from the uh, from uh, Christian's show. <laughs> You're welcome to any time. Boy, you just, you just like taking people's audiences and stealing people away from other shows, Willow. Hey, she got nothing somehow. to do today. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm st I'm not. I'm, likes. I, I'm not stealable, but I, I I will willingly go where I am asked. <laughs> oh, she <gee>, willikers. <laughs> I I just like I I just like doing this social experiment where I get a bunch of people and throw them in the room <laughs> and see what happens. Yeah. yeah, when you put country and Ryan in the same room, it's gonna be nothing but chaos. <laughs> well Anisha and I have hey, hey, probably hey, I mean, we only met yesterday and this is the third conversation we've had. I know. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> and I yeah, and, I, and I've been on a show or two with you before, Sharon. So it's good to yeah, see you again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is all yeah. cool. Is like, so, so Willow does have actually a really good got, track record of bringing people together. <laughs> yeah, we got friends everywhere, Willow. People meeting, people meeting, people. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, you know that's what right, we were talking about fan communities. That's what our conversation was about today. Yeah. We all and we all have our different oh, fandoms, but somehow we're all connected in some in some magical way. <laughs> it's the Venn diagram, yeah. right? Circles all overlap somewhere. Yeah. yeah, where is that Venn diagram, Willow? Why don't we put that up on the screen? Be like, okay, country likes this, Ryan likes that, Sharon and Ryan like this together, but maybe not so much on this one. Do you want my, in yeah, my nice room to shit. look like a conspiracy theory in the room? Yeah, like Charlie yeah, Day that, and uh, uh, what's that that's specific meme? Like it's always funny in Philadelphia dots. meme with all the, you know, that. And the, and the <laughs> Could be that. Where is Charlie Day when you need him? <laughs> uh, it's, it's best just to run. bring people together and let them chat. <laughs> <laughs> Where's oh. everybody located? Uh, well, Colorado. I mean, uh, I mean, if you really want to know, if you really want to know country, I'm in Maryland, really USA. Really so. That's a song. Sorry. <laughs> I'm in Maryland. <laughs> Maryland. Uh, Nisha, you're from Minnesota, Florida. Right I'm in Orlando. Uh huh. Okay. Orlando. I oh, Orlando. the magical city of Orlando. Welcome to the party, pal. <laughs> yeah. Orlando, full of magic. We, are, we already had the Winnipeg conversation earlier. <laughs> 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 oh, Canada, yeah, all oh, you Canadians, man, so many of you, it's crazy. Oh, Canada. <laughs> you know, know it's funny. I... All the good shows, all the good movies are filmed up in Canada, all the actors and actresses live in Canada, like all the CW shows are filmed in Canada, it's crazy. <laughs> like, I think the, I think there's a good portion of uh, fandom that's built around uh, Canadian actors, too. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, Shik -shik, yeah, Willow know? hasn't yeah. met all of them yet, but Willow's going to meet every single one of them, and they're going to bring on. They're going to be on her show, and then her, her reputation's really going to 
She's going to leave us in the dust. Let, let it rain, Sean. <laughs> your money's going to be raining like crazy. If we can get David Levy on that sh on the show, we're good. <laughs> oh, that would be awesome. I I feel like I'd have to kiss a lot of ass to get him on the show. Though. I'll tell you what, you know, Willow, this oh my is, God. that would be Will heaven. <laughs> you know, Willow, this is a long shot, but if you get my boy Captain Picard, Patrick Stewart, on this show, I'm going to be mad jealous Woo! that you got to see him before me. <laughs> you know, that will, I will yeah, say I that. I met him two years ago at New York Comic Con. Lots oh, good here. for you. Insert jealousy I, meme here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think he's... Uh, uh, Sharon, do you recall if he's ever been to Winnipeg? I don't uh, I don't uh, think so. I, not that I can immediately recall, but I am not the great... Yeah. Um, yeah. We're notorious for having... Um, Everybody um, but Picard? No, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, well, we're, we're notorious for having Star Trek uh, actors yeah. uh, come to Winnipeg, but I just... Mm. Is, yeah. is someone using my Twitch account? I was to go type a comment. <laughs> for some reason, it let me type into everybody. It's me. <laughs> I thought it would just... Be, no, I, no, no. I, I'm just yeah, like... I, 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 I saw myself pop up. I'm like, I don't remember. Uh, That's yeah, me, no, Joe. I'm from Nashville. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no. Uh, nice one, country. <laughs> you know, you're not the only. Like, I, I'm meeting quite a few people from Nashville as of late. It seems. Uh, uh, um, mm -hmm. John Pika is from Nashville. Okay. Um, you mean the prophet? Right the now. prophet himself <laughs> is, from, is from Nashville. Jeez. A lot of people back there. Uh, they, they, they had a terrible storm over the weekend, so. A lot of them are flooded. Oh, I didn't know that. A lot of people okay. in the yeah. south have been having nasty storms there, country. It's been nasty. Yeah. Dude, we got like a monster, like crazy monsoon that happened earlier tonight. I had to drive in the middle of it when I was bringing home the pizza. It's like, geez, man, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> you know? Okay, so, so Will and I are not going to complain so about snow. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have no. really bad Wait, weather. Man, there's weather snow in Canada? Wow. Get out of here. <laughs> it's been actually pretty warm today, but apparently, apparently, I wouldn't be surprised if it snows overnight. <laughs> there, there, there's a warning coming up for the southern part of the province, so that's how it is in Colorado. Don't trust your yard. Nice like, there's no sense raking your yard until the end of April, beginning of May. We can still get snow. I was yeah. gonna say you might as well bring out the snow blowers and the snow shovels, there, Willow. Uh, well. Uh, we're notorious for having like nice springs and then it'll have like a big snow dump as soon as like all the flowers start blooming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it, it's that whole thing about, you know, hobbits and there's uh. first one, you know, first breakfast, second breakfast, third breakfast. We have like first winter, second winter, third winter, eleven season. <laughs> <laughs> oh Sharon, I noticed what you did there. I like that reference. Get going. <laughs> It's the uh, truth, though. Yeah, like you just want people to get comfortable. It's like, fine, just... wear your shorts today, but you're going to be shoveling in two days, so enjoy it while you can. <laughs> but and there's always somebody on social media where it's like there's a you know big snowstorm, and then you'll have your friend post, "I'm sorry, I put away all the winter coats and winter boots yesterday. <laughs> it's my fault. I jinxed yeah. us." <laughs> or or I I just bought myself a new patio set. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it's all my fault. I went to and Home now Depot, it's gonna get so snowed on. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, our our weather is so weird. Like uh, for a while there in the summertime, we actually had you know weather comparable to that of Florida. And then it's like, and then uh, Florida was like, oh, it's raining here. I'm like, yeah. Can you stop making it rain here? <laughs> <laughs> We and never then get rain in Colorado. Where it's the whole, oh, it's colder than the North Pole or it's colder than Mars reference. Oh, yes. Yep. Uh, that's always days. fun. Um, actually, this year, I'm actually surprised we didn't get get that cold. But <laughs> Shh, don't sit <sit-dope>. down. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> don't become like, you know, you know, just try to keep warm there because you don't want to end up like Christopher Lloyd in Suburban Commando. I was frozen today. <laughs> yeah. 
Don't have to end up like that. Well, Speaking that of 91 movie. movies, there's another 91 classic for you. Well, and the part that's funny, though, is that when people film winter stuff up here, that'll be when we get the warm spell. So, like, when Keanu Reeves was up here filming Siberia, they actually had to bring out fake snow and the, uh, the blankets that you would put out. And so, yeah, it's 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 kind of funny when you you find out these things where it's like people come in here and it's like, oh, yeah, we came to Winnipeg at this time of the year. And, oh, we got a weird freaky worm spell and everything. <laughs> and they're like, really? Really? We're having to bring fake snow to Winnipeg? What the? Yeah, so we have a couple of those. I mean... It's it's expected when all the Hallmark Christmas movies get filmed here in September, like uh -huh. to put the snow down. That's but right. when yeah, somebody comes here legit for That's winter right. and they don't get it. <laughs> it's hilarious driving by some of the sets uh, from the Hallmark movies. Is uh, like they'll they'll film in like the nicer part <laughs> of our city. <laughs> <laughs> so like, you you get all and everything looks nice so perfect old, in those movies. Everything houses. looks so perfect. Yeah. <laughs> but then you notice like the the blanket of fake snow or like the the like um um I don't know what it is like it it's like um uh the stuff that y they use in packaging. <laughs> It's like they'll they'll have that all around, and it's like oh, the wow, foam, the little foam thingy. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. The magic is not there when you're driving past <laughs> it or walking by it, and like it's like that's what they're using for snow. <laughs> or like they'll have like the snow is snow machines going too. <laughs> yeah, and everybody that's walking, they've kept a buffer, but everybody's walking by in shorts. And it's like, okay, this is interesting. This is, they're doing this in July. Okay, whatever. You know? <laughs> uh, oh my goodness. This is an interesting conversation. I'm learning <laughs> a lot about Hallmark movies that I did not I know. know. We were supposed to talk about geek stuff, and then we end up talking about Hallmark movies. Tales from the Loop was filmed here. And so we had some really oh, yeah. cool, like, Rutger Hauer um was was in that town here sense. and some other really cool folks and so yeah it was that was neat to watch from a, a a creepy fandom kind of super cool way but then at the same time kind of go i recognize that <laughs> was that a real place you know like the the bunker thingy um from the beginning when 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 she's walking and looking for um from t the first episode so yeah it was it was constructed yeah like my my son has got some really interesting pictures of the set and what it looks like in reality versus yeah so no yeah. there were some warehouses here that were just totally transformed and used and there's again some super cool stuff yes oh anthony said that i agree with you anthony uh, no, that's, Nicholas. that's what i was trying to say no it is. It's a Nicholas, fact. Nicholas, Anthony, whatever. It is a subset. Yeah, like thirty names on them. It's it's a subset, hundred percent. It is not a subset. No, Don't forget about not. Hobbit. I love stories. Like that. I bought it a snowboard for a few years ago. Anyway, it's still here since. Well, it isn't for you, but it is for some people. Yeah. Like, <laughs> my hearts, and that's their fandom, and that's what they love. I so. guess. Super cool. No, I yeah. guess. I guess. Right. Anybody I is there a Hallmark you know, movie convention in the world that I'm not aware of? I, I'm pretty sure there you know, is. is like there is. I'd like to visit it just so I can get some B-roll footage. Just so you know, there is. They do have their own thing. So I didn't know that oh, until recently. And I, with the research, I was like, oh, wow. oh I had no idea they, they did these things. Just like I didn't know they did them for soap operas, but darn if they so, know. So, country, you know, you know what we got to do, right? We got to take a road trip, brother. To the Hallmark Convention? You try that and you should try one of the soap opera conventions. We should, yeah. man. We should get some crazy looking B roll footage to put on our channel. That would be nice. Yeah, they're pretty crazy. So I was like, you know, one day I'm just going to go to them just to see what it's like. I mean, why not? <laughs> Mm. That would be super interesting. Show up with our popcorn. Yeah. I mean, if we're lucky enough, we can run into Candace Cameron Bure and Danica McKellar, who we grew up idolizing as our women crushes on Full House and Wonder Years. Oh there you go. Man. Wait a minute. You're old enough? <laughs> <laughs> you are old enough to have a crush on the two of them? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember Full House and Wonder Years. <laughs> I, I remember. Dude, we all remember that. Hey, country, I, I don't I mean, we remember the eighties, the nineties. That's how I live, man. <laughs> TGIF Fridays, baby. 
See, I don't I don't really recall my uh-huh. first like TV crush though. That that's Oh, oh. I don't know, like everybody was obsessed with un- Uncle Jesse around that I mean, time. I so mean, Winnie Cooper was one of them, but she wasn't like the top top one. Uh-uh. I think the top one for me was a tie between it was Kelly Kapowski or Kim- or Kimberly the Pink Ranger from Power Rangers Country. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. And, yep. Amy Jo Johnson, how you doing? We know you're watching at home, Amy. <laughs> Hey, they, just, they were just on a um, no shame, a man. Yesterday. No shame. They were all on a show yesterday. Was it yesterday or was it Friday? Oh my god, a power round. I'm trying to think of what show they were on. I was watching. It was a virtual concert. No, they were in um, Texas. <laughs> they were in Texas for a convention. That's okay. Crazy. Sorry, my my brain was just latching mm-hmm. onto it because I was watching um, yep. a video feed from Austin because Austin was at that um, Austin St. John. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Red Ranger Jason, yeah. Yep. yep, 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 and that's how. See, that's my brain. That's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all right. I follow him on social media, so that's how I knew you, what you were talking about. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's a sweet first TV crush very, very was Christy McNichol. <laughs> oh, you Wait, know, Christy, I, uh, who, who's Christy McNichol? Really? Who's that? Really? I don't all know right. who that is. <laughs> I'm trying to rack my brain too. Yeah, that's racking my brain. I have no idea. Who is that? Come on. It's not coming to me. Uh, you want to throw it? Yeah. Willow in Canada. Yeah. 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 Facts of Life, guys. Oh, the Facts of Life? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a little bit before. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> I, that, I, I, I missed that boat. I missed the boat. I was trying to hum the thing for you. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. That theme doesn't come to mind because I've, I haven't seen the show, so I can't say anything about it. It's actually fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Never seen it. They've I've seen the show. So Never seen many it. walls with that show. Let me tell you, much more mm. than you ever think they would have. Was that the blonde? No, no, dark hair. So I remember the blonde See, one I... was always the most obnoxious one. To me. Hey Willow, can you go to your good friends at Google <laughs> Images and pull up an image of this character because I have no idea what's going on right now. Let's See, I could be wrong, but I'm Let's pretty sure Christy. that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I think I'm talking about. I'm thinking, I'm that probably Google, thinking about the wrong show You're talking about so, Blair. You're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. She was always obnoxious. There's her IMDb. Is this who we're talking about? Let's see if it's the same person. Oh, that one. Okay. Yep, it's her. Mm. No, 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 no. Okay. This Christmas right. Nicholas it was from um. Oh my oh. God! Not Facts of Life. Oh Jesus Christ! One day at a time. Okay, now I am that. showing my age. The oh, original. One day at a time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I used to used to yeah, like her. By the a way, lot. Nicholas, you, Nicholas, you're 100 percent right about Tiffany Thiessen, man. She was killing it. In, uh, oh, absolutely. Network a couple of years ago. Yeah, the, she doesn't really age, man. Like, there are thing. some people out there who just don't age. <laughs> the really creepy thing is having um, your foster sister with that same name. <laughs> really? Let me see. Yeah. I'm, gonna butt, I'm gonna get my butt chewed out because I'm I'm totally bashing it. So guys, do not kill me because you know, <laughs> I have way too many fandoms and shows in my 55 years of brain. It was wow. the love boat. Oh yeah, I had to oh. really, like flip my brain all the way through. But you know what? Wow. Kudos on you because you knew Blair from Facts of Life. That's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say. Man, the first. Oh, my God, my brain. Is, uh, yeah. I was a huge Joe fan. I love so their crazy. attitude. I know Carl. I, I got mean, I, it. My I know, brain had I know. to filter. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you know yo, what? Willow, this this is any of those shows. You know what? I yeah, I know. I had to Willow, filter this my is gonna... It's okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, Willow. This is going to sound embarrassing, but the first time I heard a reference to the TV series The Love Boat was in a movie that no one really talks about anymore, and I can understand why because we did a watch along for it a couple of years, like last year, or the year before. In Turbo Power Rangers movie, they're on the ship, and I, uh, what's her name, Tanya, the the Yellow Ranger, says, "This sure ain't the Love Boat." And then Justin, the little kid, is like, what's the love boat? And I'm like, well, yeah, what is that? And then years later, when I saw reruns, I'm like, oh, that's what the love boat is. Okay, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. I gotcha. See, it helps so now when I you have. The well, you see, it, it, see, the love boat in Fantasy Island always played like one right after the other. You was know? the love boat yeah. the one with the little guy going, the play, the play, the play. That's Fantasy Island. Yeah. 
that's that's Fantasy Island. And okay, okay. See, I was too. Oh, Fantasy oh, Island, Fantasy Island, man. You know what? That's the part I really know. Watching her, 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 her reel is making my my brain feel really old because I know so much of what what she was in. <laughs> Dang! Thanks a lot for yeah. Okay, guys. <laughs> Well, for me, no, like, it's all right. You I, say I know, 55. Yeah. I say that's just a number. Who cares? Hey, with all the streaming services now, you can go back and relive it. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's like, all I, good. I, I, no, I no love limit. watching old TV shows. Like, uh, I'll watch um, my, uh, I Dream of Genie. Oh, that's no, yes. Heck yeah. My, my, yeah, my, yeah. My mom used my mom and my aunt uh, used to show me stuff like um, uh, I Love Lucy, uh, I Dream of Genie, uh, Gilligan's Island. Yeah. So the it's like, yeah, oh yeah, monsters <laughs> and the, <laughs> the Adams family. The monsters is good. The monsters is funny. Yeah. I love all the stuff I grew up on. Like you guys were talking about, like sort of. I'm thinking of childhood stuff. You said like you know, first TV crush. I'm sitting there and I'd like. I think it's like Patrick Duffy and Bill Bixby, you know, Man from Atlantis and The Incredible yeah, Hulk. Yeah, That's how old I am. Exactly. <laughs> I adore Herman Munster. He was the best father figure ever. Yeah. Ever. So mm. cool. And then he ended up becoming and then he ended up becoming a judge on My Cousin Vinny. So how about that? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. What's a, ironic, what's isn't it? I, I love how all this is just like somewhat connected. <laughs> Everything's hey, yes, uh, but Willow. You know they don't call cousin... it six degrees of pop culture for nothing. <laughs> oh, that's cool to know. Joe keeps throwing up some. That's really your next show things. idea, huh, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were talking about that, <laughs> or was it yesterday? We were talking about it. You, yes, yeah, Sharon, you were yeah. telling me about it. Yep. Yeah. Well, okay. Elvira, Elvira. was everybody's girl, <laughs> yeah. girl crush, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Let's be honest about that. Pops of Elvira that she doesn't have yet. <laughs> Elvira is still my girl crush. <laughs> um, and it's right okay, Willow. You can admit it. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, hello. <laughs> I hope that I look half as good as her when I'm in my sixties. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Uh, Must like, be something in the genes, guys. Must be something in the genes. Who knows? It's it's amazing <laughs> for her to like. Well, she's retired from performing now, but it's amazing to see like her performing still in her sixties as Elvira, and I'm just like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like we said before, some people just don't age. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my She's goodness! Even help something in California too. <laughs> I don't know yeah, something California about that. Yeah, all that California sun on seventy-five degree weather. Yeah, that helps too. Yeah. Especially live, especially if you live near Rodeo Drive in that little zip code known as nine hundred two one zero. Some of those people haven't aged either. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Certainly something in her jeans, yeah. <laughs> or her bra. Hey, hey, hey. I wasn't going there, Carly. I was hey, we would have there. eventually gotten there. <laughs> keep this family well, family this is called Willow's Pillow Talk. It's all right. So it is, is, man. Is I should have expected it to be 17 years. <laughs> it, it would have eventually got there and if it's not me and someone else usually brings it up so <laughs> it's already nine o'clock it's already nine o'clock on the east coast so uh, uh let, let, let's be it honest is, yes i'm well, the one who usually tonight, ends up talking yeah. about the boots first <laughs> <laughs> and that would be appropriate you mean the, you mean the assets you mean the assets right is that what yeah. it's called <laughs> Because I don't know if they're hidden assets, but oh, you know. sh Raquel Welch. Yeah, hey. I, I was gonna I say, love, have you seen man, this movie? I'm sorry. Go go go! You guys talk about Raquel Welch because she just reminded me of Sophia Loren, who's in oh, an yeah. Academy Award nominated film right now, and I'm killed it. So, <laughs> and she's still in. Um, <laughs> Well, that's, she still that's, looks hot in her. Yeah, yeah. How old hurt. is she? What, 80 now? She's, yeah, I think I'll look it up, but I know she's in oh, her. Oh, is that how old Raquel Welch is? Well, Raquel, uh, Raquel Welch is, yeah, what, is it, um, what, 60? Mm -hmm. 
At least in her late sixties. Something around she there. She looks hot. You know, the, you know, the first time I met Raquel Welch, she was in an episode of the greatest sitcom of all time, known as Seinfeld. She ended up having a cat fight with both Elaine Bennis and uh, Cosmo Kramer on the same show. Mm -hmm. Now she's eighty. So uh, there you got it. Yeah, she's that's 80. how I met her. Wow. Wow. Yeah, she's pretty All incredible. good, Raquel. We, I loved you on Seinfeld, Raquel. I know you're watching, so thanks for being a part of that. <laughs> great job. Great cameo. You know, great show. Good tunes. Good brew. Good buddies. Yeah, I'm looking because she was born in 1940. That's 26 years older than me, so I'm like, yeah, yeah. she's going to be 80. Yeah, and, and Sophia good Loren heavens. is 86, so Raquel so Welch is 80. Is Sophia Loren is 86. It's crazy. Uh -huh. She just, yeah. I don't, that's, I don't know how that's 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 crazy to me. <laughs> Mind boggling, isn't it? But if you haven't had a chance to see it, um, try and get on and see that. She, that's so I, I I will still always love uh, Sophia Loren and uh, Grand Prix Old Men. Yes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I love those movies growing up. She can keep everybody in oh, line. Oh, is she the one who tries to open up that restaurant? Yeah. Mm hmm. The, the angry Italian woman. <laughs> I love her so much. Oh, that was her. Okay, Restaurante. It's a bait shop. No, it's a Restaurante. I'm like, okay. Yeah. yeah, I grew up watching that movie, too. I know what you're talking about. It's all coming back to me. I like <laughs> so many movies you grew up watching. It's crazy. Hey, Grumpy Old Men were, it was like oh. one of my favorite movies would refer back to all the time and it was uh, the two of them uh, just redoing their whole shtick of uh, the odd couple yeah that's it's so much that's that's what it was and again I remember no. watching that growing up but it is fun going back and watching stuff like my kids there's 11 year age difference so I watched you know introduced one to stuff and then now the second one is you know of an age and so we've gone down some interesting paths where it's not necessarily the first time that he's watching it but it's the first time he's actually like paying attention so we're doing some re like we had he had a real like mind-blowing epiphany moment when we watched wayne's world he was just like oh now i understand you and like certain <laughs> like certain my peers <laughs> it was just like yeah because yeah. mike myers and i are about the same age and yeah. you know aurora is really scarborough chicago is really toronto there was a you know a bar with that name there was all this kind of stuff <laughs> that the and the this and the that there were so many things where i'm like like the stan makita that's tim hortons you know that there's because there is le legit a tim hortons and the part that's funny is like tim hortons yeah. is now this huge chain in canada um and i think it might have actually been bought by like burger king or something like that but at the time tim hortons was only like a handful of places in the you know the ontario mm -hmm. part of ontario so it wasn't this big thing that it is now so no. back in the day for us, it was like an inside joke. Oh, Stan McGee's taught Tim Hortons, you know, <laughs> nobody else is going to get this. Uh, <laughs> Wasn't there just a Tim Hortons that opened up in Nashville yeah. oh, just recently? Country? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I've seen quite a few of them, especially in Georgia and uh, other places yeah. in the South. Yeah. That's, a, that's a, a place that was started by a Canadian hockey player named Tim Horton. <laughs> who opened up like a little, and, and, and that's why it's so like Canadiana and why it was, and, and there were even some folks in Ontario that got upset when it went beyond being this little, you know, family run place that then expanded and a couple little fran it, once it turned into a big franchise thing, it kind of freaked a lot of Canadians out because it was no longer like the mom and pop kind of place directly tied to Tim Horton and especially once he passed away. And so yeah, it was it was kind of bizarre to, you know, to sit there and go, oh my God, there's a Tim Hortons in Nashville. Like that's just weird. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately that's what happens with a lot of things when it just expands and gets bigger. I, I I just wish that they made their own donuts still. <laughs> like I don't know. There's just something know, about going to God, going to Tim yeah. Hortons at at like uh, Hot just, just as they're bringing out the fresh uh, yeah donuts after they they came out of the oven. I was just like, mm. <laughs> has anybody ever been to Texas? Uh, huh? Do they have it in Texas? Well, they have a uh, place called Bucky's in Texas. Oh, okay. It's uh pretty. I I refer to it as like a. Uh, 
a convenience store on steroids because you can pretty um, much get everything you like you want to get at like a store like Walmart or something like that at this gas station that has like over 200 pumps attached to it. Holy it is, yeah, it's crazy. You can get lawn furniture at this at these places. It is <laughs> insane. And when they say everything's bigger down in Texas, they are for real. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm going to go, go uh, get a tank of yeah. uh, unleaded and pick up some lawn furniture. Yes. Definitely. It's funny. That's when hilarious. I worked for 7-Eleven uh, several years back, <laughs> um, I remember looking at uh, one of their catalogs of uh, their rest or like their their stores and seeing like all the food and I'm just like like chicken and pizza and I'm just like holy crap <laughs> I want to work in a store like this. Well, <laughs> I mean Walmart mm, does have gas stations. The things we learn about Walmart, save money, live better. And also you can put gas in your car through Walmart. Anyway, I do want to do a quick, real, real quick Willow, if you don't mind. Oh, quick round table it. question here, because I actually just, I've been summoned to Studio D or Studio E, whatever it is. So I got to get going here in a minute. But real quick, we were talking about movies we grew up on watching as kids, right? What's you a VHS tape of a movie that you watched so many times that you burned out the VHS tape that it broke? And if you guys think about it, I can play the Jeopardy music in my head while you're thinking about it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Batman Returns. Because I know my answer. I know my answer. I See, okay. I, I'd have to say Beetlejuice was one of those shows that I – or movies that I would constantly watch as a kid. That and uh, Adventures in Babysitting. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Elizabeth I think it was the original Beauty. Star Wars. Like it was that, that's I that's the one right. that had them ended yeah. up buying the most copies of. <laughs> um, Narnia. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. The, we the watched BB, Narnia. The BBC version. The, mm -hmm. yeah. we have it on VHS. That's a yeah. fine. Let me tell you, it was really hard to get that. So yeah, Sword in the it. Stone, the animated Sword in the Stone. I actually have that too. That that's that. another yeah. one that 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 snapped and you. Yep. And that was, well, the thing was about that That's one was cool. that was the one recorded off um, when Disney would, sh would, would be broadcast on Sunday nights, the wonderful world of Disney. So it was, it was, it was recorded mm -hmm. off. Oh my God, yeah. And it's, I think it snapped because of the fast forwarding through the commercials. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Oh, I have Hobbit Jeez, too. Man. You know, the BBC version. Well, yeah. Yeah. The animated Hobbit. That was, oh, yeah. wow. Man, I, we're, I we're remember getting, getting shown that uh, several years later. I'm just like, wow, this was actually pretty neat, but being creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very creepy. Thanks. Yep, you got it. I, I remember watching Jesus horror movies crazy. and not being as creeped out as watching the, the animated version of The Hobbit. <laughs> wow, so, so you, and, you and Freddy Krueger were best friends then, huh? Okay. I, I, was, I was watching horror movies from the age of five. <laughs> All right, someone clearly gave you too Again, much I don't to have a tapes, normal, I did that. not have a normal childhood, guys. <laughs> no, it's cool, but it's fine. Everyone has different childhoods, respectively. Country, what's yours, man? Uh, Batman Returns. Mm -hmm. It's funny you bring that up, Country, because the tape that I wore out the most when I was a kid was Tim Burton's first Batman movie. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Especially mm -hmm. when you look at the guy and you say, Bob, remember, you are my number <laughs> one guy. So anyway, Willow, I'm going to head out of here, but it was fun to see all you wonderful people. Oh. I never apologize for being awesome. I'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs> Have a good day. Ryan. Have a good Hi. night, Ryan. Hi, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was unexpected. Unless this is how it's expected to be. <laughs> I just invited some people on, so <laughs> um, I mean, it, it's it's okay. always fun to uh, talk I'm about gonna, random stuff. I'm gonna uh, have to live down going through my whole filtered brain to remember where the heck Christy McNichol was from. I swear, my brain just went th like through all these damn shows. <laughs> Even with the picture, I still had no idea who she is. Yeah, no, it took me. I, I, I was, I was there with you. Only I think I was about four steps behind each one. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying so hard. It's like, oh my god, I'll remember this. I swear, it'll come to me. But it's funny that uh, Nicholas brings up Tia Carrera. Like, yeah. I met her when she came to Winnipeg, and I'm just, I was like, <clears throat> totally 
geeking out and of course like that was like the first time i'm i uh fangirled over a celebrity <laughs> and i'm just like i need to calm down i need to calm down <laughs> <laughs> but she is at least she was professional about it when i met her so it's <laughs> I try very hard not to fangirl, but at the same time, it's like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> yeah. so, oh, um, my God. Yeah. Is there a celebrity that you guys met that you were ner nervous around? or? Uh, I think one for me that was, was weird was when I was living in Toronto. And so we were in Little Italy and there's this wonderful bakery called Tremare. And then there's a cool restaurant like right next to it. And so we had popped in, we were getting like almond cookies and all this other kind of stuff. And then um, popped out and somebody had said something. We we're like, what? And Seth, uh, Seth Green was in uh, the restaurant. And so it was, it was just like, the, oh God, we did the thing where we, like interrupted the man while he was having dinner. And the other part that was weird was where it came in in terms of the, you know, the, the Buffy and Angel universe. It mm -hmm. was this weird thing where he wasn't showing up in episodes and it was where he ended up for a period of time. Like basically it was when he left. You didn't yeah. realize that it was where his character. So you don't know, you know, and it, it was this weird kind of thing where it's like going, saying hi and this and that and whatever. But that was like the weirdest because it was like the first time we yeah. ever like interrupted anybody. Anything else has been either, you know, at a con or like something like weird and spontaneous or something like that, where you could, you, you didn't yeah. feel like you were bugging a person. Yeah. Yeah. So that was like, that's probably the weirdest one for me. <laughs> Country, how about you? Any celebrities that you were kind of nervous about meeting or... Um, I don't know. Well, growing up around Nashville, you meet a lot of country singers. First. Okay. Uh, so, so it's up, like normal for you guys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've always looked at them as people, like uh, just like just like any of us. Yeah. Uh, one funny story was, um, I don't know how familiar anybody is with the WWE. Very. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I I used to travel and sell beer at sporting events, concerts, and stuff like that. So we're in Tampa. We're at Raymond James at a uh, mm -hmm. U2 show. And anybody who's ever been to a U2 concert knows that the fans are crazy about U2. They sell out wherever they go. I mean, it, it seemed like a religious experience of what I was watching going on in this place. Because everybody in all unison was singing all the songs. I'm looking around. I'm like, yo, this is a kind of cultish. But okay. You know, it seemed pretty cool. But I was walking through the, um, the um, what do you call it? Where, where they get all the concessions at. Okay. It was um, through the breezeway. And I happened to look up, and there's Seamus, the uh, Celtic warrior. I mean, dude is tall. So I'm like, what's up, Seamus? And I kept on walking like nothing, you know. <laughs> and he's, sitting, he's standing in line with some friends wait, trying to get a beer. And one of his friends actually stopped me. He's like, hey, hey, come back here. You know, and uh, Seamus did give off that vibe of, yeah, I'm too good to talk to you type of type of vibe, you know. So it, it's just the kind of vibe I was getting from him. So I'm sitting there chatting up with his friends, so his friend, like making his buddies laugh their asses off. And sorry about the uh, profanity. And um, I don't know where Seamus just turns around, starts handing me cash and stuff. Like, let me get one of those. Let me get one of those. Let me get one of those. I just thought it was uh, that's one of the most funniest stories. And then there's another time Aww. we're down in Nashville. This is where the NFL draft is going on. And I have a couple friends in from Wisconsin, and um, what's his name? Uh, he's a rapper. Um, he's a white rapper that's all tatted up, and he's from that area too. Eminem, or um, you're talking about uh, recent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he did a song with Eminem. Crap, what's his name? Um, Any, anybody from that? Because he's from Tennessee, and anybody from there is going to be like, "How do you not remember?" Not Logic, uh, because Logic has tattoos, but he's not that. Uh, I know who you're talking about because he's on TV. He well, happens movie. to come into the bar and Doritos commercials. <laughs> yeah, my my friends I'm with start freaking out. They're like, "Oh my god, oh my god!" I'm like, "What?" And they're like, "Oh, it's such and such and such and such." And I'm like, "Okay." And I, I knew, but they said his name. I knew who he was, and I was like, "Okay." And they're like, "Oh my god, dude! Oh my god!" I'm like, "Well, okay." And it's like, I've seen, especially being downtown Nashville, you'll I remember seeing Kid Rock 
park his car in the middle of Broadway on Nashville, get out of his car. He was in his white furry coat too. And he starts yelling at someone if that's parked in front of him. I mean, he, he has a habit of being drunk and belligerent down there anyway. But I remember he parked his car right in the middle of Broadway, Nashville, and gets out and just starts yelling and cursing at whoever was in front of him. I'm like, wow, I think I've seen it all now. I think I've seen it all. But as far as nervous goes, eh, not really. I mean, who knows? Yeah. If I've ever met one of my crushes from growing up, like Jessica Alba or somebody, um, I might. But <laughs> so far, I haven't, so I don't know. Uh, Nisha, uh, any celebrity stories you'd like to tell? Are you talking about Post Malone by chance? No, no, no. What Post? Wow, what is this guy's name? I'll, I'm gonna find it. I'm, I, I can't believe I don't remember it. Because I'm going through rappers in my head. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm trying to pull out the few. <laughs> um. Oh gosh, yeah. I mean, for what? Because of what we do, you know. <laughs> um, right. I I end up with. I mean, who ever thought when I was 13, being in the life I was, and so completely not. I mean, a huge nerd, an absolutely huge geek, loving everything in the world, but being this young Indian chick would never in my life think I'd be where I am today. And I'm just saying that. What a, what a growth and what, what, what a blessing. So I literally get to interview celebrities and a lot of people from all over because of what we're doing for the research. And a lot are actually really very kind, very, very, very kind to me. Um, I've rarely had anybody say anything, no, which is always surprises me. So that's a huge story in and of itself. If they have the time, they will give the time to me. Yeah. So I've that's always so cool. been like so taken aback by how beautiful the community, those communications are. <laughs> You're not going to believe it. So I'm a massive Wonder Woman fan. And you would have thought that when I met Linda Carter, that I was going to fall all over myself. You will never believe the person who I got to fully tongue-tied with. I could not imagine. Haley Atwell. I have the biggest crush on Haley Atwell you can imagine. I adore this woman. I adore this woman. Everything about who she is, everything about Peggy Carter, anything you can imagine, I love in this mm -hmm. character. And when I went up to meet her and get my literally three-minute interview, because I get you know, I was like, oh, my God, I can't even get the words out to talk to this lady. And I was like, look, I'm just going to tell you something. I am so sorry. I apologize. I'm not like this normally. I'm pretty collected. But because I know what you mean to me and I know you're actually the exact yeah. person that you, you know, that that you play. I know that it's for me. It was like. Ugh. And she was like, oh, God, you're so sweet. You're so <laughs> <laughs> I was like, she was like, don't worry, don't worry. We could do this again. So she gave me a few minutes. We collected the self. And I just went, and I, you know, I was able to get my my few minutes with her. Um, really, she totally made me the clump. I adore that person, that woman. Um, I have had the luck to interview a few wrestlers, mostly WWF, though, because when we're lucky, they'll come down. Mm -hmm. So those yeah. were always wonderful for me. And I think that's about it. Even when I met Patrick Stewart, I thought I was going to freak out, but I didn't get to interview him. I just got to do a quick tap and yeah. hey, this is who we are, blah, blah, blah. So I didn't really have a chance to fall all over myself. I, I probably would have, though. <laughs> <laughs> Yellow Wolf. That's who he is. Yellow Wolf. Yellow Wolf. Okay. And he's actually from Alabama. I guess he's just living in Tennessee, but. I'm trying to think of who else. Um, the only other person who I kind of got tongue tied around was Lynn Manuel. Um, just because yeah. that's a really hard person to talk to because there's yeah. just so much to say that you're like, okay, what do I say <laughs> in the, in the two minutes I have in your, in your space of time. So <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I never really, I mean, it was amazing, but him with him, I fangirled, if that makes sense. I didn't yeah. do the normal, hi, this is who I am. <laughs> this is what I do for the, you know, so, but I think. Yeah, that's cool. No, I think the coolest one that we ever had was actually sort of like a family experience. And it was the year that, uh, again, my youngest one wanted to go as Han Solo on a Tauntaun. So we made him old school Han Solo outfit because we knew it. it was that yeah. hot in 
the costume. <laughs> then I basically made him a wearable stuffed animal. So he, <laughs> his legs go into what would be the tauntaun legs. He had like boot covers that were the, the feet <laughs> and it was held up with suspenders. And then of course you put the, the winter coat over top and then he holds it up. And, and so and again, had fake legs, you know, coming <laughs> down from the, cause his body comes up through the, um, yeah. Uh, through the saddle. So he was walking around and we could barely get anywhere because people were always like, Oh my God, Oh my God. Oh my God. So um, Billy D Williams was at the con that year. And so we were like, that's it. We're bringing, we're bringing yeah. the old school VHS tapes <laughs> and we're having Billy wow. D Williams sign them. So yeah. the way they did it, you know, this whole thing, like some days it's a signing day, some days it's a photograph day. And so this was the signing day. And so you get in line for the signatures. Well, what happens is, he looks at Heiko all dressed up like this. Now, and this kid is little. He's watched the movies, but he doesn't have a concept of this is Billy D. Williams. Yeah. This is Lando Calrissian. So this is Han Solo's best friend. So all of a sudden, Billy said, oh, my God, this, come back here. Get some. And we have to navigate this costume. Come behind the table, asks his assistant for his iPhone and to take pictures. And the next thing you know, he's flipping it onto his social media. Nice. nice. And and, and we're just like, okay, so we really don't need to pay to have pictures taken. And like, and so this kid is like, I see he's just pumped because as far as he's concerned, you know, Han Solo got to meet Lando Calrissian. And I'm just sitting there like, <laughs> Billy D. Friggin' Williams. <laughs> but okay, we're just gonna, we're gonna we're gonna live in the so that none of our brains explode. We're gonna live in the smaller world of the Star Wars universe at this point. Because if I if I try to like think of anything else outside of that, yeah, like I'm, uh, you know. <laughs> but like so as a mom, and so like to have him, and I mean, well, it'll still come up in like the memories and the this and the that, and it'll be like best Star Wars costume I've ever seen this young, whatever. And you're just like Billy D. Williams took a picture with my kid, like he chose <laughs> to take a picture with my kid. I'm good. I'm yeah. not happy. You know. <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah, it was cool yeah. that it happened as a as a family event. And I think that's the one thing that I have to say is that cons became like a family event for us. And that's where yeah. Oh god, yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. Well, and, and with them happening up here around Halloween for so long, like that's actually what why he stopped trick-or-treating and, mm -hmm. and why we stopped decorating our house because it was like, well, what's the point? We're all gonna be at the convention center over the Halloween weekend. <laughs> and this is a kid with anxiety as well. So you would try to take him grocery shopping. He couldn't go into a mall. He couldn't go into a big grocery store. Bring him in to a con where yeah. it's, if any place is like sensory overload, tons of people, blah, 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 blah. Nope. Totally yeah. <laughs> normalized event. Like the, the biggest issue ever was things like, gee, I, I'm not getting a chance to see much stuff because everybody's stopping me because of my costume in that particular case. And then the fact that he got really hot. So we did do the whole, like, you know, there was a time when we go off and we peel him out of it. And then of course everybody cracks the, you know, I thought they smelled bad on the outside joke as this kid gets out of this sweaty, stinky talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, but like, that's, you know, that's what I love about fandoms is yeah. that's what it's given our family. I mean, my baby, like my grandson, I, he came over for his first visit to the house. What's the first thing I did? I took the infinity gauntlet down from the the dining room where <laughs> it's it, and I tucked the baby in it. So Benjamin is like tucked <laughs> like an infinity gauntlet and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> the hell is coconut? <laughs> you will soon realize that we're all dorks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this, this this is this is what our family does, you know. Oh and, yeah, and I, I love it. it. Every baby it, born in this family gets um, the best geek stuff from me. I am very careful. I look at what the mom is into, what the dad, <laughs> what the family dynamic is. Because you see, yeah. we have huge family dynamics in the nerd world, and <laughs> the child is you know, what is the word? Anointed in yeah. geek them. <laughs> they get <laughs> very close. <laughs> That, that's what I love about our family. Like, I don't have any children, so I'm trying to spoil my nieces and nephews as much as possible. And uh, my my nephew, my sister's kid, uh, he wanted a lightsaber. And I'm just like, 
excellent. <laughs> what kind of lightsaber? We need to talk about your color and what this means. Mm, you know? Sit right here. Let me tell you. Something. I have a sitting behind me. I don't know. I'm sure you can. I don't know if you can see them. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, my my husband's uh, brother, his kids all wanted like these DC superhero stuff. I'm just like, Woo! oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, yes! One of the very first shows I ever did when I first started this with the DC versus Marvel. <laughs> I, I it just I'm sorry, you just reminded me of it because yeah. while well, this show was a challenge, I was asked to be on to see if I knew anything. I was like, ah, <laughs> sure, I'll come on. <laughs> go ahead, let's go. Go for it. Sorry, you just kind of made me think of that show. I, I just love the fact that I don't have to force the nerdum on these children. They're doing it themselves. And I'm just like, oh, I'm going to have so much fun spoiling you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Although, like you said, the whole thing with the Ghostbusters stuff with like, my granddaughter, not only does she like basically hijack, you know, Heiko's outfit and I have to retcon, like, you know, basically adapt it. But then the fact that she's like, you know, sitting there going, okay, so, you know, when are you getting bit? Like the kid was like two weeks old and she's like, well, when are we getting a Ghostbusters outfit? And it's like, you know. Because it's an expectation. You understand? It's oh, yeah, yeah. It's, you oh, know, it's part of the family, you know. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> he's, he's, he's exposed he's to all of this. Like, their house, you walk in, and there's this little, like, it, it, in one respect, it looks like this little, like, a little den area. There's these shelves. There's these two wing chairs. There's a nice little bar. But you look at all the art and what's on those bookshelves, there's the Spidey print, there's the Iron Man print, then it's everything from Magic, the Gathering, Lord of, you know, oh, this is the Lord of the Rings shelf. Oh, there's an entire shelf de dedicated to Iron Man over here. Oh, here's, you know, um, and, and just different kinds of action figures. But it's just, you know, so that's what you walk into. The dining room table, we are still trying to find a frame for the map of Middle Earth that they've got that I'm just going to have to, like, pay through the nose for something custom because that's the art that's supposed to go over the dining room table. There's, you know, you get into the office, that's all different posters, but you, the kids' rooms are all themed. So she's got, you know, again, it's, it's a Lord of the Rings leaning sort of forest kind of thing. The well, of course it is. And, I mean, and you've got this one little weird storage room that was, it's basically, it's, they're waiting just for the, the weather to be warm enough, but they've already got the, some different like stickers to put on there, different adhesive things. And it's going to be the, um, the oh god my brain is like going i can't believe i can't oh my god my daughter-in-law is gonna the whovian's gonna kill me um <laughs> that's gonna be the tardis, tardis. Yes, the tardis. tardis. Oh, nice. how can i forget this it, uh -huh. it's called the tardis room because it's the costume room and the and, and the storage room and there's always <gasps> more, you can always <gasps> put more stuff in it so they got the tardis room yeah, <laughs> We, 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 there's the TARDIS, um, <laughs> the TARDIS cookie jar at their place, but this, like, the whole house is like each chunk of the house yeah. is a different fandom, and there's anime art up, and there's this and then that. Oh God, and yeah. It's just like, and so, yeah, like, it's just an expectation. Like, they just assume that, you know, <laughs> well, doesn't everybody dress like this, or why does, like, like does no one, mm -hmm. like, you know, when my grand when my granddaughter asked for a poster that had Deadpool riding a unicorn, <laughs> I was just like, "Okay, my work is done here." Yeah. Like, that's, uh, you know, they have got like th this is my grandbaby, and she is six, seven years old, and this is what she wants, and she's wondering why I haven't made her a Deadpool costume yet, and I'm just like, "I have the T-shirt." <laughs> <laughs> um, San Diego Comic Con, the one with him riding with the unicorns all over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was up in a room. <laughs> well, everybody, I got to get going. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, country. That's I was. Okay. Uh, Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. See Stop by anytime. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice, nice to meet y'all too. I talk WWE one day. <laughs> oh my God! I grew up in a house that was 100% WWF. It oh wow! Was part of our our living room for you know two days a week we would sit there and watch wrestling the one thing with my family with them <clears throat> with the men which was really interesting they didn't set any boundaries in terms of us in terms of what we loved you mm -hmm. know like fandom wise oh heck no no we all watched wrestling you know we all watched star wars we all watched yeah. star trek it was uh, it wasn't like hey that's not a girl thing the only thing i didn't do was play <laughs> 
because they played cards like, hmm, you don't want to be at that table. They were like pretty, you know, <laughs> took it a little seriously. So that wasn't my world. But no, I mean, I mean, I'm listening to you and I think about it. Thankfully, the dynamic in the home, that was the thing that worked probably to really support me <laughs> through a lot of stuff. But it was the fact that I was never told, no, don't engage in that fandom. No one ever said that's not for you. Because my mom is 85 years of age and she was reading DC comics and Marvel comics when they first oh. came out. Wow. When they first came out. Yep. Yeah, oh, wow. like my, my folks were not into that in any way, shape or form. And it's like, they'll take you to Star Wars, they'll do the things. Yeah. But they weren't, it, it, it was sort of like that was just, it was being a good parent and it was or the this is what makes them happy but not, yeah, not going as far down I mean, the rabbit hole. She didn't, they didn't go, in a sense, they didn't do that either, but at the same time, it was never, oh, it was like, yeah, no, let's, sure, do that, read that, that's cool, do it, no problem. But it's, is there any wonder that I'm who I am today? <laughs> Think about it. One of my favorite, 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 I'm like hijacking your conversation right no, now. No, by all means. One of my favorite memories ever in my existence, and I, and I we, we all cherish it, cherish it. It was my, grand, my great aunt's 75th birthday who has left the earth now many years. <clears throat> and we were in New York in a, you know that great blizzard in um, 75, 75, I think it was uh, 15 years ago. Because yep. the kids were 10 and 11. It was about 15 years ago. Huge, massive, 16, 15, 16 years ago. Massive blizzard. We all got snowed in after, so no one could leave the city. So we were all in a house snowed in for three days. Wow. And all of us were snowed in. I am talking about 20-something people um, were snowed into my brother's house. We would... Hmm. We binged Lord of the Rings. Yeah, the direct. <laughs> the family would sat there, and everyone would pile up in that little living room. The TV would go on. Floor, every space you can think of was covered. Every blanket you can think of, everyone with hot chocolate and snacks, and it was Lord of the Rings. And you know, you're talking about <clears throat> nieces and nephews and aunts and uncles and everybody you can think of. And dang, if everyone didn't, you know, all, all the major lines, everyone knew it oh, down. Oh, wow. You know, to the six and seven year olds. And I was like, okay, we raised you well, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and, and even the adults sat around mostly and watched everything. And so it's, it's a cherished okay. moment because it was probably the last time we were all together after oh, that okay. life changed. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. Sorry, I went there. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I, I, I was gonna, uh, I was gonna start asking, uh, what, what fandom was it that got you through some of the tough times in your life? Yeah, no, it would be that for sure. It's interesting because you know we asked that. It's part of our, it's yeah. one of our research uh, postulates. But um, oh, it was always going to be Wonder Woman because that really, as a child, it was she was the number one thing, the number one connector for me. But it was from the comics. <clears throat> I was okay. reading, I read from the origination as far as I could. I mean, I wasn't around the 50s, right? <laughs> but I was in the 70s. So in the 70s, I would sneak to the comic book shops, um, you know, and just sit there and read. And it it was a huge thing for me. And my parents let me spend my money on comic books, which okay. was a real blessing for me. So I had that. I was a huge fan of Captain America. I mean, I could tell you everything there was to know about him about his storyline. So when I'm looking at Winter, I'm looking at Falcon and Winter Soldier, I'm like, yeah, I know exactly the US agent. I understand why it happened. Exactly. I did not like that it happened. I understood why it was done. It was a political move. I mean, all of these things. Uh, yeah. So Cap yeah. for me and, um, and of course, Wonder Woman. And then, oh my God, Lord of the Rings is my life. So much so that we have a, we do, we do an audio drama based on um, the Silmarillion. My um, oh nice my board, my board members, um, Louis Louis Cacao and I, we did a full year of ASMR audio uh, audio drama of the first ten chapters of the Silmarillion. So oh, that, wow! So oh that wow! Understand it. So I retold the entire story, but I rewrote it in a way it's still in the original language, but in a way that people could listen to it and go, "I get this story." Yeah. So I would say that's a passion. <laughs> 
I'd, so. I'd say for me, probably, I mean, I, again, my, my gateway was Spidey as, as a toddler. Um, but I would say in terms of, yeah, like mental health and well-being, probably the X-Men. And that was just mm -hmm. that whole, you know, again, because it's written about the outsiders, this, and, that, and, and, and I will admit that there was like sort of periods where you, you know, you're, your different fandoms ebb and flow and certain things come in. So that would was there and then it was going into other stuff. And so there was definitely like D and D came into stuff later mm -hmm. uh, and, and these different, you know, again, the, the ebbs and the flows, but that was like, that was the one and then coming back to it. And especially when my oldest one, when it ended up being on TV, the animated series, that was that really nice revisiting. And so in some respects, what I find really interesting is that because we bonded over that and that was his entry into it, I sometimes find my my memories of that animated series and that yeah. that version of things has become kind of like my template because yeah. of yeah. because of the bonding and the, yeah. and the fact that we watched it got if there was a tape that ever broke from his era, thankfully it never did, but it was again all the things that we had um, you know, taped off of, I think it was Fox Rochester that we used to get in, in Toronto and, and saw Fox kids. And so every episode there was, was, was recorded and watched and rewatched. And then it had to be rewatched every time a costume was made because then whenever <laughs> I, because again, before we had the internet and screen caps and DIYs and cosplay, yeah, device, so blah, right. blah, blah, you're watching it. So, I mean, da -na 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 -na. yeah. Oh yeah. And then pause. Hold on. Okay. Do the drawing. Do the, and again, you couldn't do a screen cap. You couldn't do, take a picture with your phone. It was like, tracing paper sometimes on the tv set just to you know get a drawing of something to make sure that you were getting yeah so i i would say it was with those ones for sure and that's what i'm really enjoying about the about both first the x-men movies but now the mcu is just yeah it's it's a beautiful I, flow it, it's 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 really again it's sort of like what you mentioned there about taking the cimmerillion it, it it is this distilled version like i get it doesn't go like civil war yes that was clearly like i love that series and the bajillion books that came out mm -hmm. but you can't fit that into a couple of movies or a movie. You have no, to do a all. distilled <laughs> version. And, you know, when people get their knickers in a twist about it, it's like, look at, did you want, you know, do you want the spirit of it? It's like a translation, right? When you translate mm -hmm. something, you don't translate it word for word. Right. You more translate to get the spirit of it and to get the yeah. thing. And that's what I think I love about it the most. And so when you're talking about like Winter Soldier, like I sit there and I think about exactly Cap's arc, Bucky's arc. The fact that they mentioned Isaiah Bradley, like there was a whole thing there because yes. that was another thing that you're going like, there's a whole level of relevance in terms of contemporary relevance that is is brilliant. Like it wasn't just like, oh, we're going to rehash a thing and we've got to throw this in and da, 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 da. It's like, oh, no, 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 you can't do that. It's, it's still can. relevant. Yeah. The great thing that I love about Marvel is that they're not afraid to touch on uh, mental health issues. And like, uh, even in the comics, like the cartoons, they they kind of touched on it a little bit, but they did it in, in, in such a way in the comic books that it's like you, you related so much to certain characters. And it's like finally a character that that is going through something that I'm going through. Yeah. You know, um, and now with the movies and um, WandaVision and the Winter Soldier, there's so much more that they're touching on uh, mental health wise. And it's just like, it, it's mind blowing. It, yeah. And you just. During that, they're talking about gender inclusivity. They're looking at racism, but um, um, they're looking at biases. They're, they're, they're allowing all of that to be overlaid. And, and subtly and yet not subtly, but mm. they've been filming that way for a while. Kevin Feige is is not going to water things down any more than um um I won't say George Lucas, but any more than oh my god, I cannot believe I'm I'm, I'm wounding myself right now. Star Wars just give me Dave Filoni would because the the most important thing is the message. Mm -hmm. Well and. and and John Favreau too, of course. Mm -hmm. Favreau. Oh well, Favreau. I, I mean, and that's the other part. Like Favreau and um, and and Robert Downey Jr. I remember when Iron Man, because that was the, you know that's the first movie, right? And people are like, oh my god, they they're casting Robert Downey Jr. That's a risk. I'm like, dude has been method acting and pre for this. Like, if there is anybody like demon in a bottle, he did, come on. He did a great job. Tony, 
it's already it's changed. him yeah he, he, did. Tony. he literally was Tony. he, he was like it's more like no like this was written for him and then the way and what he and Favreau did and again the story arc the redemption the the fact that he's not perfect and that he has those lapses and that he, you know <sighs> Just all of these things where there's, I think that's the part that I like about them. And it goes back to that earlier comment about, you know, um, Zack Snyder's Justice League is the difference that I struggle with, with, a, a, the, I guess you say, if you're going to put it into one of those DC versus Marvel, I have a harder time relating to some of the DC characters as people that yeah. I feel I'm empathetic sure. with. And therefore, so so my bond with them is very different. Whereas yeah. I find in the Marvel universe, it's so much easier to have that affinity to a Peter Parker, to a Hank Pym, to a Bucky Barnes, or, you know, Wanda mm -hmm. Maximoff. Like you, you feel this connection. I mean, heck, even think about vision. The fact that you're like going, I'm, I'm technically, I'm emotionally attached to to something that is, you know, completely artificially constructed. Oh, so yeah. of course Rhonda's going to be what? Yeah. attached but, and grieving. Like, when, yeah. you, when you pair away the film, the filmography of DC, where I think the issues have been, I don't think I know because I'm a DC fan. Okay. Yeah. So um, you're talking about characters like why did Suicide Squad do okay with fans? But why did Harley Quinn do so beautifully? Yeah. Why has Wonder Woman done so well? Why did Shazam do so well? Because those are DC characters that are highly connective, but also there's there's a level of realism to yeah. the life experiences that they're living. Exactly. And yeah. you can you can reach in and say, I can I can put myself in that reality. Yeah. Whereas what they're doing, unfortunately, the story Batman's story is connective, you know, it highly mm -hmm. is, but it depends on how you're telling the story. You have to yeah. sell it the right way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you you either empathize with the kid that's been traumatized and never recovered, or you're like, holy vengeance demon. Like, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Who's this spoiled brat who just wants vengeance? Because yeah. sometimes that's the way they do it. Yeah. Why do you do that? Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to see that. I don't want to see that. Yeah. I And, you know, I connected to the original Batman and Robin, for goodness sakes, because I... That I had stories that said, okay, this is the positive, pos this is the hopeful yeah. side. Of yeah. And, and that's where I even liked, like, with the beginning of the, like, the one that Tim Burton did. I mean, again, mm -hmm. the franchise eventually went and imploded, but there was a relatability there. And again, it was that same thing with the casting of Michael Keaton and people going, oh my God. He, and I'm like, no, if anything, he's more convincing because nobody's going to believe that this guy, this Bruce Wayne, is yeah. the guy that would go off and do that. Yes. So, like he, the, he, he yeah. is literally the two different people. So to me, that was brilliant casting. And then again, there was something within that character and how he portrayed it where again, and I think that's the part that gets, I don't know how to say missed, but sometimes when you get into those things where it's all about the special effects and the explosions and this and that, and somewhere in the process, mm -hmm that becomes the bells and whistles becomes the focus and, and the story mm -hmm. is lost. And there's a lot of times where it's like, you know, if you can have those things. That's great and wonderful. Make me go well. But if I've lost that connection with the character, it was, I, no, I found the same thing with Iron Fist in that whole series of stuff. I connected oh, yeah. with Paige. I connected with Jessica Jones, like everybody. And then just the way that they did Iron Fist, just the way I, there was just, there was a thing where I was just like, again, it, I hate to say it, it was kind of similar to the Batman thing. Oh, look at the spoiled brat that can buy That's shit right. and, and, and do it. Like, really you know? Oh my God, they did such a bad job. I wanted to love it. <laughs> but when we had the Defenders, I adored the Defenders. Yeah. Adored it. And I was like, yeah, give me that. Yeah. Because that makes sense to me. Um, you know what made sense? Cloak and Dagger made sense to me. Give me that. Oh, what a revelation that was. Yeah. So that's when they, I think that's when the MCU knew that, oh my God, we can be transparent. We can be tender. We can show vulnerability. You know, see, and that's yeah. when it, that's when I started to like DC is when they actually started showing, uh, you know, Clark Kent as you know human, uh, yeah. and like bringing his his life story. Uh, it 
into the fray where it was, you know, him trying struggling as a kid with all these powers and trying to be normal. Uh, yeah. But, you know, I he had that his field. You know how many people cannot stand that movie because of how um, empathetic, it, empathetically it was written. Yeah. They, they don't understand the brooding. The brooding is a pure, absolute loss and grief. This is a child who just realized he lost every single person in his history is obliterated. Yeah. And yeah, all no of going his truth, where you came nothing, from. There's no going back and every truth is gone. He loved his family, but wow, go ahead. Put yourself in that place and tell me what you would do. Yeah. Tell me what you would yeah. do. Would you not have done the same thing? I probably would. I mean, I, I grew up in foster care and having to go through that whole process of not understanding why I was taken into foster care at first and, you know, missing my mom and just having all those anxiety attacks and wondering how my mom is and just yeah. wanting to talk to her going back and then seeing mm -hmm. life, you know, kind of not really change much from the first time I got taken into foster care and my mom drinking and, you know, not like the whole thing of and. And then it's just like the whole thing of watching her kind of fall apart and not being able to do anything. Right. Yeah. And being but taken away like, again. Completely, yeah. <laughs> you completely live it. You know exactly yeah. what he's yeah. struggling with. It may not have been the same story, but you yeah. walk the same path, which is the path that they were supposed to be taking with Bruce. Mm -hmm. Because for God's sakes. Yeah. I can't even, I mean, it hurts to talk about the pain yeah. that that child went through. And all, all through my, in my childhood, people were like, why are you obsessed with superheroes? I'm like, hello, <laughs> look yeah. at the storylines. Yeah. <laughs> That's why Gotham did so well because Gotham w went into the darkness of it. Yeah. It explored that darkness from the get go. It opened with it and it allowed it to stay in the casting, it allowed it to stay in the cinematography, it allowed it to continue. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's how you do justice to something. You allow it to be what yeah. it's supposed yeah. to be. Yeah, it's 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 not the one or two repeated backstory scenes, jump ahead X number of years. It like that was I think the one thing that was really nice about Gotham was the fact that you got that richness and that you got that richness with a variety of characters where you're like, yeah. okay, this again, it's not a random thing or it's not the, the no, one no, no. freak yeah. accident and turn so and Perfect. so into whatever. It's like you watch this process and you're like, ah, okay, yeah. this makes sense. So it's not just random bad guy and random this and that and you know it, it 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 had something there that i think added a layer that was really missing i mean it was one of the reasons like when dark knight came out the, the the graphic novel there was again there was literally a darkness there but there was also again that mm -hmm. rich rich part of it i mean one of my favorites still to this day is electra assassin and that oh, is gosh. one that yeah. i'm sorry but there is nobody has done justice to Electra in any yeah. of the portrayals. And it's because when you look back on a work, you know, like, again, and I'll use that one as sort of an example, but there's just, there's so much there. And, and that's what's happened is every time they've tried to do it, yes, maybe there's a reference to the hand, maybe there's a, but there's, it's just, it's so knotted and messy yeah. and nobody's done the knotted, <laughs> messy, dirty trauma, whatever that you got in, in, you know, that particular, especially, like I said, an Electra assassin where, I mean, I don't know if it'll, that would ever get made into a movie, but I know that right now they, they've been focusing too much on, oh, sexy lady in a red outfit and her size yeah, and, and her affiliation with whatever men and that they kind of thing. Kind they haven't of, gone into just literally. They kind of touched on it in the movie of, uh, of Daredevil, uh, but yeah. it just, no, not close enough. No, I mean, uh, Charlie Cox did a, a beautiful homage oh. um, to Daredevil. I, my God, I mean, yeah. I, I would have to say that the right really person. Good. Jeez. Yeah. And I think that if they paired him, and this is where I think they have issues now, I'm going to jump to another side. Um, when you have the right TV cast, 
if fans have connected to them to that extent, like they have with the DC cast, they have. They have 100% connected to these DC casts. That's why Arrow was on for how many years? That's why Supergirl you know, did so well. That's why we're back to another, um, uh, not just origin, but we're back to another, um, oh gosh, it's another multiverse of, of, of soup. Yeah. Because people connect to that. They should allow that to transfer into the films. But for some reason, in the DCEU, they keep thinking they can't do that. And I, I don't get it. I'm not sure I understand why. But you look at Marvel and Marvel's doing that now mm-hmm. because they're taking the film characters and putting them on TV. Yeah. So they're they're allowing those loops to stay to stay and stay closed. And, and, and interweaving them and not mm-hmm. seeing them. And I think that's even what I'm gonna find interesting is when um, because of again the way Marvel and, and how things got, you know, X Men went off to here, so and so on this and that, and he's bringing them all back together. And so the fact that I mean, again, it was it, the, the you know she recast <laughs> her brother <laughs> aspect of of, of Wanda Vision was brilliant because it was one of those ways that within the integrity of the storyline, you could say, okay, we're going to start to weave these things in. We're not sure, you know, we're not going to give you too many mm-hmm. ways of doing it, but. It it was that that getting yeah. getting over those hard and fast yeah. boundaries that had been created, and I mean, you saw them. I mean, Agents of Shield did that a little bit. Like I loved how yeah. like, Shield. Yeah. You'd have to you had to watch it a certain. Okay, well, no, I, I can't miss this week's episode because this is the one that comes out right before the, the movie, movie gets released on right. on Friday, and then I'm going to have to exactly. watch the one on Monday because. It, it all flows and yeah. it's not like a weird, like if you miss the movie, you're not going to get the episode, but there's going to be the Easter eggs or the throwaway lines or the, whatever the little, oh, yeah. Nods. All these Nick Fury conversations leading directly into a movie and then coming back out of it. You're like, okay, I love it. Now you're seeing, I see they were toying and they were, they were playing with the concept of doing, of filling those gaps and creating that flow when they with um Peggy and and with um and then with Agents of Shield and yeah and, you know and seeing that people want that people want that continuity because of the because of how it affects them they don't need the disjointed disconnections because it really makes it yeah. difficult for us to continue to to feel that connection. yeah the um the umpteenth reboot of a thing and I think that's where Marvel again and this had to go with a different ownership aspect was the whole oh god all the different Spideys. But again, if they can play with that later and bring it together in a multiverse thing, then that would be awesome. actually be super well, fun. Well, they are. I yeah. mean, yeah. And the, so next gonna, you know. the next movie is so, multiverse. After, yeah. Not this one, but the one after. It's after yeah, exactly. But the idea the of taking that thing and instead of going, gee, how are we going to, you know, deal with this? This is, a, it's like, no, actually run with it and play with it. You've got a premise for this. And so that makes it fun. And you can, again, and that way if somebody says, well, this is my favorite Spidey. Well, no, no, I like this friend. You know, great. Y'all got your Spidey. You know? Yeah. <laughs> well, into the Spider-Verse opened the door for that to happen. Was that was, I, oh my God, I could watch that like literally. All the time. <laughs> I've watched it seven, eight, nine times <laughs> now because yeah. it's that good. And the fact that you actually, you know, like, it, my thing is, like, having, you know, the the incredible spider ham oh. <laughs> added to it. It's just like, wait. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. the noir. Well, the noir, what do you see? Yeah. But, but that's, and again, when, in terms of, like, the program that I do, one of the, the images that I use is one of the scenes where it's, you know, Peter Parker and he's got his coffee cup and you got spider Gwen and you got Miles Morales. And it's, and it's that whole thing where it's like, okay, we all have the same, you know, see, people can have the same diagnosis, but they're all different. You want a perfect example of that? Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, exactly. because they're all people that are all technically, you know, in this the same, but look at all the different versions of Spidey there are. And and so same but different. So don't don't view us and that and I think that's the other part is is like playing with those things. I mean, it's frustrating to watch some franchises that they haven't been able to get off the ground properly. Like think about how long it took, you know, the the, the various iterations of Hulk before we finally got to yeah. Mark, like Mark Ruffalo. And, you know, I, I have just been like, please, can we get a fantastic four to work? There's Thank been you. snippets of yes. different things, but like that is one where it's like, for the love of God, don't get me wrong. I I, I love your, tor- you know, your torch casting. Like, please keep, please keep, literally keep play- hot. You know, if it becomes a launching spot for like hot men to go into the MCU, I'm yeah. there. Um, 
<laughs> but can we actually pull it together? You, once? you mean be realistic sometimes and allow us to feel like that person could be us? Yes. Like, yeah. I, I, think, <laughs> I feel kind of, uh, the Fantastic Four for me has never been, uh, like, I've never felt connected to the Fantastic Four. Like, for me, it's always been, like, I, I'm not convinced enough that either Johnny Storm or uh, or um, Thing could be an astronaut. I don't know. Like, yeah. I, I can I can see Sue Storm being an astronaut. I can see Reed Richards, but yeah. I just... But again, and that's where some somewhere in the translation, and again, I don't know if, if it is that thing between, you know, um, somewhere between story writing and, oh my God, we've got all the tech bells and whistles, something gets lost in the translation, because I think there's so much potential for it. Yeah. And, and yet it just, it something happens in the execution. And I mean, that's where I yeah. have to say I'm happier with how the MCU is maturing, because they haven't had mm -hmm those drop balls the same way you haven't had as many characters where you go well, or even if you're doing something glitchy they're they're able to pick it up later and yeah you, you, you can't open, give them they opened the door for fantastic I, I agree oh, i'm so sorry i'm jumping in about the concept because by opening the door with agatha um harkness Oh, yeah, yeah. literally, and um, Machiavellian devil care uh, that's coming. <laughs> I, yeah, hope, yeah. I hope, I hope. Um, you also have no choice but to open the door to Fantastic Four to come back because yeah. that's where this connection is. Yeah, you know, the Doctor Strange storyline with the Fantastic Four, first of all. The one thing I didn't like is that they took out Adam Warlock and then they took out the Fantastic Four and the runaways from Infinity Wars, because well, without them, that Infinity Wars wouldn't have existed in the first place. But I get that they, at the time, didn't know how to make that a reality. And I get that, I understand that. My hope is, is that they're going to actually tie it back in because of the the overlapping uh, multiverses, yeah. um, you know, the billion of them <laughs> that Dr. Strange talked about. So. They, they're pretty indelible, so it's kind of weird to have them kind of all all wiped out. So I'm hoping, because those are very important characters and the growth potential mm -hmm. of the the layers of, of the MCU, because you're talking about how we talked about in the, uh, our other chat, Sharon. Yeah. You're talking about a Gen Z all the way up to the aged and the matured MCU hero. And so you have to allow those to... to you know, to assimilate or to become or culturate into the MCU because they were written to be there. Yeah, yeah. they were written well, and, to be and, and like, runaways. I, have, I I see as a, as an undervalued, under recognized series because again, there's just so much that is literally that connection. And again, it's about kids learning to use their powers. And it's about, and the fact that there's some kids with powers, some kids without, but they've got these other skill sets. And that in a sense, the, it's, it's not that the powers don't matter, but, but it becomes more about, okay, what does each of us bring to the table? Yeah. How do we use them? How do we manage them? How do we deal with the fact that so-and-so can now do this thing and that can be both an asset and a liability, depending on yeah. how we as a group. And so it was, and, and that, you know, again, teenage dynamics of siblings and friends and cliques and all these other kinds of things. Like it was just, and I'm like, why do not, like enough people, like not enough people know about this. I mean, I, I think it's wonderful that I could talk about the mainstream MCU movies, but I say runaways and I watch people's eyes. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> yeah. Um, and they say cloak and dagger and they're like, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to be completely honest. I, I haven't really delved into those worlds just yet. Um, I just, um, the movies, I, I, like, I, I, I definitely want to watch them and see what, how they're connected with everything, but I just, it's, with, it's between working and everything platforms. else, I just no, haven't had the, to take in. It's a yeah. lot to take in and they're on different platforms. And I think that that's, that's one of those things it's a mixed blessing because in some respects i think it's good they're planting seeds in different places so okay so the hulu people are going to get this and the da, 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 da. so they're 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 doing that it does make it a little bit more difficult but what it does is it plants seeds in new places that can then grow different parts of the fandom. And then maybe, so somebody, there could be somebody that has no idea really the connection between the Runaways and any other part of the MCU. But if they get hooked on that and that starts, okay, boom, then they, you know, 
what's the yeah. thing that might draw you in? And then later on, you see the connection to those, yeah. those things. And I think that's sometimes where you're saying like there, that streamlining that happened with infinity where there was just a, okay, there's so much stuff. What do we do? Okay. Here are the X number of characters that we already have. And I mean, people already complain about, you know, the end of end game there where it's like, oh, well, so-and-so didn't get enough screen time. And you're like, look at how many, when people are on the screen, everybody, yeah, everybody cannot get five minutes. Of they, did, they did an amazing time. job. They did yeah. an amazing job with what the time would they add. Yeah. Um, I, I cannot be the only one who teared up at with seeing all the women just team oh, up and no. just, that was just, you know, and I'm just like, yes, that's what I want to see is, you know, yeah. it, a some team up like that. As, as it was the, oh, well, it was dismissive. They just did that. And it's like, look at, there were so many characters. You, I, I would much rather them have done that and then use it as a launching pad for other subsequent projects Which is than that. do it, then do a shitty job of trying, th then it would have really looked like you were trying to shoehorn something in yeah. and half-ass it. I think yeah. they're going there, right? Because yeah. in the long run, Pepper becomes, you know, the next iron yeah. being. Yeah. Um, in the long run, you know, Captain Marvel's Captain Marvel. In the long run, you know, um, Letitia, well, not Letitia Wright, but you know, um, Black Panther. Yeah, I'm sure he's going to become the Black sure Panther. He has to Black Panther. Into the canon. Yeah. Well, so people just, like, what are we going to do? And it's like, well, they probably didn't want to get there like this right now. Yeah. But it's canon, so we can go there and they can. Yeah. But I, I yeah, exactly. In the original story, they were actually, they actually, in the dimensional, in the multi-dimensional version, Sharon will tell you, yeah. it really was all the women. Yeah. Oh, because okay. of what had happened. So, yeah. and you see, and that's what I love about the movie Black Panther, because you're like, on one level, yes, we have a black male lead. And then at the same time, I'm going, until Captain Marvel came out, you're like, Black Panther is the most feminist MCU movie there is out there. Because it's like, yeah, technically he's the Black Panther. But, but the women are running the show. Yeah, you know, <laughs> Black Panther is really important, but he can't do anything without his sister. And and you know, and same thing with Iron Man. I mean, look at the Pepper Potts what? is yeah. the one who runs the company. That's right. So, <laughs> yeah, Jarvis. I mean, hello, yeah. <laughs> Jarvis created by Peggy Carter. Thank you. Very yeah. Much. Like, hey, hey. If there's a heartbreak Mom, that I have related to the MCU, it was the canceling. Of Peggy Carter. Oh, one of the worst things they they yeah. they, they, they I they wanted to bring that so back. much to see that yeah. show succeed. Yeah, and I think I, there's part of me that wonders if they if it has to do with timing. And again, it goes to that conversation that you and I had, had earlier mm -hmm. about the whole thing about fandoms and whether oh thinking about you know where women fit into the market and and mm -hmm. guessing wrong because I uh, you know. It, it, if Peggy Carter had, let's say, only come out, we'll say last year, and somebody tried to cancel it this year, heads would roll. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. now that they've seen WandaVision, and so I'm hoping there's some way that they can pick up that dropped thread, um, you know, from a production perspective. I really hope they do. Just the Eternals, you kind of have to. So I'm curious to see how they're going to overwrite because Eternals had a very strong connections with S.H.I.E.L.D., and at that yeah. time, so I'm, I'm I'm just curious to see how it's going to work. Plus, Eternals' origination story was a lot is is not now. It was yeah. then. So I mean, I'm I'm just curious. I'm curious to see what they're going to do with timeline on it. Yeah. So I mean, this is they have opportunities to bring her back anywhere they want to. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's true. Because to me, that was just like such an injustice. It was in terms of her role within the MCU. Her role, like just her. Like, yeah. None of this would have existed without her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> world, we, have, we have this. You so. know? Well, and especially to the way you could see the, where the arc was going, because it was that whole thing of, oh my God, they've literally reduced her. Here's this woman that has done all of these things. Yeah. And she is now post World War II literally reduced to like a secretarial role and is having to do. And so you were watching these things evolve and then to just 
have the plug pulled on it. And you're like, no, no, no. Cause now we're missing this whole, there's, there is like literally a gap. Again, if, if you're looking at it from the general public perspective, who has never gone into the comic books and their only knowledge of the MCU is what gets put up on a big screen, you're still leaving them with this big gap. Yeah. And that does a disservice to the entire MCU. Yeah. It does. I agree a hundred percent. And in, in terms of fl fluidity, um, story arc, but so much more. I think if we, if, if enough fans pushed and said you need to bring her back because there's so many gaps that need to be filled, there is, yeah. I, I think that the support would be in the in casting. Most everyone yeah. understands that at this point. But I mean, let's see what Feige thinks, right? Because he's the ultimate person who has to make that decision, I yeah. think, in the long run. Um, there's a lot of opportunity there. So, hey, <laughs> I do want to get kudos to Marvel Rising, too, because that series is really amazing. And if you haven't had a chance, get on Disney Plus and try and watch it. It's okay. the coolest of the series yeah. to watch. It's the easiest of the series. And it's the one that's basically bringing us back into the animated versions of Runaways in animated versions of those characters. So they kind mm -hmm. of use, and plus we're getting um, Ms. Marvel and now we're going to get a Ms. Marvel movie. So, you know, yes. this is, there's a lot of continuity um, behind the movie actually sitting in that series. So if you didn't watch it, you may, you would have missed some of the, the tidbits. Yeah. How do you guys feel about uh, uh, Black Widow being pushed back again? Uh, put it this way part of me gets it in the sense that they you know it, it's that whole it, it's the pandemic thinking of you know we really want to be able to do those kinds of theatrical releases that we used to do and and on one level this is what she you know what she deserves we waited this long for yeah. it and so it's it, it's put it this way i wouldn't want to be the person making that call yeah. Because um, on one level, I appreciate it when stuff does get released under these circumstances. But there's a, it, and again, we talked about this with the, the Zack Snyder four hours, I can pause to go to the bathroom thing. Just because you can do it, there's still, there's still something different, especially, and I think we're all really craving that desire to sit, like, I want to see her on a big ass screen yeah. with surround sound and blah, 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 blah. Not to say that I wouldn't enjoy it on my TV, but I, th so I think yeah. that's where part of the pushback is, is, yeah. is wanting to have that. I, but, I saw WW84 in, um, in, it was the first movie I went back and saw it in, in theaters. Oh, because yeah. I needed to give that justice to it. So, yeah. yeah. No, it, and we were at a point in lockdown here where that wasn't an option for us here in Winnipeg. So no, yeah. it was, you were going to get, you know, it's on your TV. That's it. Suck it up. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying, I'm actually trying to think of, I'd have to probably look at like calendar or theater, like ticket stubs to figure out because the only movie that I recall seeing since lockdown and since everything was we did have that, that period of time in the late, like the summer ish before and the BTS movie came out. So I know, I know. <laughs> but I had to sit socially distanced with a mask on with all my other army folks. But that's like so. But as far as like, I'm tr I, I'm trying to think of the last like superhero or any yeah, other. Kind of movie I that I, I think for and, me and, and Joe, it was I, I think it was Endgame that we the last time we actually saw wow. a movie. That's, that's <laughs> the worst thing in the theater. <laughs> well, I, I think it was I'm trying to remember where the Star Wars stuff. It might have been Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. yeah. That might have, yeah. Last I have December? to admit, like, the pandemic is screwed December, up. The December time. before. Yeah, that was 12 of 2019. I mean, we used to do movies regularly. I actually wanted to do justice to Raya um, because, oh, God, if you haven't seen it, please, God, see it. And make sure when you do get to a theater and you're able to, if they're still showing it, please go see it in the theater. Okay. Raya okay. is phenomenal. If you haven't seen it yet, I've been wanting to, so okay. Now, like again, this is it's the, it moves straight, shot straight up to my favorite Disney animation film, straight up. Really? There. Yep. Cool. Heck yes, Aquafina is a revelation. Oh, I knew that she has that in here, and oh god, it gives me chills. Um, 
I won't tell you because well, it's spoilers. Anything I say is going to be a spoiler. I will not do it. Um, but please, anyone who listens, please go see Raya. Please <laughs> yeah. go see it. it is worth it for your emotional health, your physical health, your mental wellness, your understanding of the journey of grief, and so much just and self. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, so cool. I've been wanting to see it, but again, that struggle of big screen, little screen. Yeah, doing the little screen, but once you can go out and see, you know, see it as best as you can. Well, you see, and that's something that I'm hoping actually that happens is sort of re releases of movies or second releases oh, I or yes. ongoing showings that, that, to me, you know, as far as Hollywood is concerned, they've got a lot of backlog of mm -hmm. things that they could, you know put out a second time or the, again, it only and, got released on, you know, or not everybody was able to see it in the theater because, and do that. And I think there's a, they'll, this is the perfect time to bring back like the matinees where it was like a whole evening of watching movies or mm -hmm. like a, a right. make it a day of, you know, one movie after another. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I am looking forward to it. Um, I know here in our theaters, they're allowing us to book um, a theater if we have um, 12, 10, 12, or up to 20 people on mm -hmm. our own. And the price is actually pretty okay. So, you know, I'm, I'm holding out like for a couple play for a couple movies coming, I'm holding out to do that. Yeah. yeah. I know you guys don't have that option. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, or, I got, I gotta love our government. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I, I, I had, yeah, I had a phone call the other day of, can, can we trust that you'll vote for the conservative party? I'm like, ha, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my darlings, I actually have to run yeah. oh, okay. early work day, so. <laughs> Yeah, I've well, got to wrap I, up some things too. Yeah. So this has oh, been a fun evening. Thank you for bringing no us problem. together. Thank Not a problem you. at all. I, I, this is a per perfect time to end the show here. So uh, Sharon, uh, where can we find you on social media? Uh, www.speakup.co and there's the uh, my Twitter and Facebook and uh, yeah, Instagram are all under I think that name too. Or under Sharon Blady. I'm sorry. It's it's a Sunday night. It's late, and I have three brain cells. Uh, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> and Nisha, uh, well, where can we find you? So you know, it's right there. <laughs> yeah. um, that's what I should have done. <laughs> I, I just do it because it's the easiest way to do it for most people. Um, so uh, uh, you can find us, of course. Um, I am launching um coming up uh, a, a series a web series on youtube which i would highly love to have you both on the one i told you was going to happen yeah. which sharon knows is going to be happen that's going to be under my title the geeky np because this is where we're mixing medicine and madness <laughs> Absolutely. and um uh, you can find us on social media of course diversely geek and hopefully Soon, the Diversely Me Foundation event, brights, uh, workshops, etc., will be launching as well. We're in the planning phase right now, still working on getting that done. But check us out on all social media sites. Um, keep up with us, and you know, just keep your eyes open because we have a lot planned. Yeah. Just to get it done is a lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I am uh, the Hanging with Web Show uh, program director. Uh, I'm the I'm the one who does all the cool little posters every morning. <laughs> of yeah. What shows are I happening? <laughs> uh, they gave me control of their uh, uh, of our uh, Instagram and all the posts that <laughs> I do. It's just like all about our shows. So it's, I'm having way too much fun with that. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you can find us, uh, find me on the Hanging with Web Show TV, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, all that fun stuff. Um, if you guys have if, like my show, buy the merch. Um, there's lots of there's lots of merch <laughs> available: <laughs> t-shirts, mugs, masks, you name it. Uh, and uh, so yeah, I'm. I'm glad that you guys uh, stopped by. Thank I'm 
I'll make sure that I plan the, sh the next show that we are on a lot better. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining me on Willow's Pillow Talk. You guys have a great night. Take care. Bye.